Culture and Leadership Program Phase 1 tools look at your organisation through five cultural elements at all levels. The survey will tell you about the leadership strengths of your staff and your organisation as a whole. This tool consists of two online behaviour surveys, one for staff in your organisation and the other for those in partner organisations. For example, health and social care organisations that you routinely work with. The partner survey is important for identifying potential advantages from working across organisational boundaries. The survey asks you and your colleagues to think about your own behaviours and those of your leaders. The survey encourages awareness of desirable behaviours and gives everyone the opportunity to feedback on their own experiences. Findings from this tool could be used to inform the questions asked at your culture focus groups. The Culture Transformation team will host your online survey. We suggest the survey runs for two to four weeks. Involve any communications experts in your change team in launching and publicising the survey to staff. We advise your CEO sends an email to all staff asking them to complete this survey and explaining why it's important. To ensure a response rate of at least 50%, you will need to send reminder emails to all staff and to conduct wider engagement activities. We will provide you with an analysis of your quantitative results. The change team will need to theme the free text comments in relation to the five cultural elements. Your change team lead for this tool should then, with others, present the findings at your synthesis session. We found the tool very useful to assess the culture of MFT. What it helped to do is to give a diverse range of staff the opportunity to contribute to the culture diagnostic in a systematic way using a predetermined set of questions, using an approach overall that our staff weren't um, unfamiliar with in that we regularly run poll surveys at MFT. I think it was around 1,300 returns on the questionnaire and 22 from our partners. What's really important about that questionnaire, again, was that it was anonymous. Staff were able to give feedback freely and not feeling constrained in any way. And what was great was getting them from our partners as well. So how are others perceiving us, not just our own perception of us as an organisation? I think the richness of those really good evidence-based leadership questionnaire around the five cultural elements was really, really useful. Then we were able to use that information then to build on, well, what then's coming through the focus groups? What's coming through the board interviews? What's our GMC survey saying, our staff survey saying? And being able to pull all of that data together. And also then the partner bit's really important. How are others seeing our culture at NUH as well? Not just how we're perceiving it internally. Well, the survey asks 10 questions that are linked to um, different areas of the cultural diagnostic. So there are, there are questions around support and compassion, learning and innovation, managing performance, uh, and the questions ask individuals to comment on their own leadership abilities in that area and on leadership uh, in the organisation as a whole in those areas. A number of change team members are responsible at different times. In the preparation, um, the whole project group are involved in signing off and confirming the questions and the supporting information that will be provided to um, staff before they complete the survey. I've got responsibility for liaising with NHS Improvement and NHS England on the actual practicalities around administering the survey. Colleagues in workforce support us to identify the staff to be included in our random sample. Uh, and then two or three members of the change team will be involved in supporting the analysis of the feedback from the survey. Because it's a large scale survey, in, in our case we surveyed approximately one third of our staff, which is around about 8,000 staff. Preparation is key, so determining early on exactly who's going to be included in the diagnostic. So for example, will you include all staff or will you include, as we did, a random sample. Then working with internally with the workforce team to determine um, that we get a good representative uh, random sample. 
thinking about the comms that go out to um, staff and to leaders across the organisation, letting staff know when the survey is coming, what the time frame is that they will have to respond to the survey, and liaising closely with our colleagues at um, NHS Improvement NHS England on the timing of the survey, signing off the content and so on. So preparing that as far in advance as impossible so that you're ready to launch on the day that you've determined. Thank you.